I don't know how we got onto it, but Lamar just casually mentioned that uh, he never went to kindergarten. And we kidding. were all like, what? So yeah. basically, basically, Doris had Lamar put him out in the backyard to play with his brother Troy's alligator, and then dusted him off and sent him to first grade. Like, what do you mean you didn't go to yeah. kindergarten? There was no such thing as far as we were concerned. And to and, and, and it's not mandatory. In Georgia, it's not mandatory to go to kindergarten. There's a lot of states that don't make you go. And we're out in even the middle now, of the sticks. Even now, it's not mandatory? Yeah. There are states right now, I, I, I didn't know no, that. No. In fact, like, I thought maybe it didn't start till later, but it's been around <laughs> since forever. But no. Well, well if you didn't go no. to kindergarten, how are you able to socialize? That must have really been a problem for you. Yeah, maybe that's why you're such a wallflower. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lamar, if you didn't go to kindergarten, where did you learn your colors and all the words to this land is your land? Like what what did you, you just walked into first grade completely uh, never having been to school before? Yeah. They teach you everything. I mean, <laughs> Well, Tom I mean, and Jerry. The idea, I mean, the you know, idea Alice of kindergarten. Academy, yeah. it, it it's to make you socialize and and to follow rules and to also you know take the fear. <laughs> oh, my mama! My mama made. My mama took care of the rule <laughs> part. I knew how to follow the rules. I knew that. For okay. Fact. Uh, I yeah. have such I, I have such vivid memories of kindergarten, and I feel like I learned so much in kindergarten, but maybe. Maybe it was just fancy babysitting. I don't know. Now you're making me question. Well, see, that's see, that's what I, I think. That's what my mama thought of that. And you know, and listen, my mama was a stay-at-home mom up until I got ready to start school, and then she got a job that went to work before school and got off when school was over with, so she could pick me up. I don't. I don't know if she did that because I was going to school, or I went to school because she did that. Because maybe if she didn't get that job, I'd still be sitting at the house. It's <laughs> in, in, in some places it is mandatory, but in Georgia, it's still not mandatory. You do no. not have to send a no. child to school until they are six. Well, think oh, about this. Kidding. Think about this. Wow. From from my mama's standpoint and everybody else's standpoint is, I mean. They're going to teach him sooner or later. That's what they got that for. Why Why would we send him somewhere else? And and I think you had to pay you, for it if you went to kindergarten at that point. I don't know. You know what, Lamar? I bet you were just a delightful child. Because my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, <laughs> my mother-in-law told me once, she said that Kevin, my husband, was so busy and so wild that that boy needed to go to school as soon as she could find. He, he was in preschool at age two. And when I told like my mom that, my mom said, was preschool even invented back then? Well, they invented it for him because that busy boy needed to go somewhere and spend some time. So you must have just been a, a very easy to manage child. Kindergarten. Kinder put me out, kindergarten. Put me outside. Kinder <laughs> That's good. <laughs> go kindergarten ahead, was a very important uh, building block for me to develop as a personality, as a the, the human being that you know, because I could remember the first day, Douglas Smith was my next door neighbor, and we were dropped off by our mothers, and Douglas started crying right there the first day because his mommy was leaving him, and I didn't have a problem with it. I just stood there, and I was looking around at stuff and staring at Douglas Smith and feeling so superior. Oh, that was so formative for you. And I bet every single time you were a line leader and the teacher gave you credit, that also helped build you into the man that you later became. I liked wow. that very hey, Bob, much. Yes, I did. Bob, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, let me point out something. Mm -hmm. You went to kindergarten. You learned all that stuff at kindergarten. But mm -hmm. yet, and I didn't, but yet, here we both sit. We're Boy, both doing the, exactly the same thing. And well, for anyone point. that's you have a point for, there. For anyone that's concerned, for anyone that's concerned, I want you to know that Lamar knows his colors and his numbers. Yep. Okay. 
Yep. And he knows yep. he knows how to patiently wait until his name is called to get back in the line. <laughs> it's Gee. Bob and Sherry. Sign up for our newsletter. We never spam you. Never did. Get Bob and Sherry exclusives. Just go to bobandsherry.com. So my husband is finally home from his epic road trip. After months of uh, being cooped up and recovering from his ortho surgery, he decided that he would get in his truck and he would drive across the United States of America to visit his mother-in-law, who he is her favorite. She prefers him above all of us. And then he, um, I went to the NAB and flew home and he drove home. So let me tell you, and this, this is marriage. So I'm really, really zippy with technology and the internet. And Kevin is really good at a lot of things, but, but I'm better at that one particular thing. So he would call me from the road and say, um, do you think you can find me a place to stay? Because typically he would camp, but he drove through a ton of snow in Colorado and New Mexico and his legs all jacked up. So camping is not really um, a good idea right now. So I would go on booking.com where, not to brag, but I'm a level three booking.com genius. <laughs> so I get all these <laughs> discounts and stuff. And, and I would find him places to stay which is harder than you might think, depending on where you happen to be in the USA. Like if he called me and said, I'm 40 miles outside of Santa Rosa, New Mexico, that's easy. I just go to booking.com and I plug in Santa Rosa, New Mexico, and I find him a spot. But he called me the, he called me um, night before last and said, I'm on I-40 in Arkansas. And I want to I want to stop somewhere between Little Rock and Memphis. Can you find me a place? So I pull up, find my iPhone, and I look at where he is on the interstate in Arkansas. And I'm just here to tell y'all. Now I have a lot of there's a lot of beautiful stuff in Arkansas and a ton of really cool history, like um, Fort Smith, Arkansas is uh, one of the one of the Bonnie and Clyde stops, and it's an epic part of that tale and. The, the little downtown is pretty much intact as it ever was, and it's really cool, and there's a great a couple of great state parks in Arkansas, but the interstate between Little Rock, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee is a empty, echoing wasteland. So now I'm trying to, I'm like, all right, I'll call you back. So now I'm trying to calculate the driving distance, and I'm looking at all these little tiny towns like uh, Briscoe and Carlisle and Hazen. And if you're wondering, I've never heard of any of those. Neither has the Days Inn or the Courtyard by Marriott, okay? <laughs> like, there are no hotels. So I'm, I'm studying, and the deal with Kevin is he doesn't care where he stays as long as he, he's one of these people who, if, if whatever the attraction is, if it's more than two miles off the interstate, he doesn't want to go. You know that you know that mentality oh, yeah, where yeah, yeah if he can't see it from the highway. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking and uh there's one there's a, a hotel in Briscoe, Arkansas, and there's one room left. And by the time I click reserve, it's already gone. So now I'm in Hazen, Arkansas, nothing. Finally I get to Carlisle, Arkansas. And I'm like, I found a room for you in Carlisle, Arkansas. It's the only room that I can get and I'm going to book it, and I'll text you the directions. So about an hour goes by, and I hear from him, and he's like, well, it looks better on the inside than it did on the outside, but it smells weird, and if you were with me, you would never stay here. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. to myself, if I was with you, we'd have planned a little better, and I wouldn't have found myself looking for a place <laughs> to sleep in the yeah. middle of the wasteland of I-40 in Arkansas. 